Hello and welcome to today's sliced text effects tutorial. My name is Chris Parker and I have some exciting tips to share with you on this project. So check it out. This is the sliced design project you're going to create today. When you're done, you'll know how to slice text, how to create a curved drop shadow and more. Are you ready to master this GIMP text effect? Awesome. Let's do it. All right, let's create our document for our project. Go up to File and select New. And for the width, let's set it to 1920 and the height 1080. And then for the resolution, let's set that to 300. The background color doesn't matter because we're going to change that right now with a color gradient. So click on your foreground color swatch here and choose a color of your choosing. And I'm going to choose this color here. Here's the information. If you want to use the same color, just type that into this box right here. And then for the background color, I'm going to choose this color. All right, I'm going to use GIMP to help me out here to place it directly in the center of the canvas. So I'm going to go up to Image, Guides, New Guide. And by default, you should have Horizontal selected. Go ahead and click OK. If it's not visible, go ahead and go to View, Show Guides, and then Add a Vertical Guide. All right, let's grab our gradient tool here. And then in the tool options, make sure you have the shape set to radial. And then for the type of gradient, set it to foreground to background RGB. And go ahead and click in the center here and drag out your gradient. Okay, once you're happy with your gradient, click enter or return. And then we can go ahead and hide these guides. All right, let's grab our text tool with the letter T. And then you can use any font you want. I'm going to use this one here, which is a free font. And in the description below, I've included a link to download this one. I'm going to set my size to 400 and the color to white. All right, in all caps, I'm going to type out sliced. Once you have that typed out, click your escape key to get out of that tool. And let's crop the layer boundary to the content by going up to Layer and selecting Crop to Content. This way we can perfectly align it in the center of the document with our alignment tool. So grab that with the letter Q or via the toolbar up here. To activate that layer to be aligned, just click on the inside of the layer boundary, then set in Tool Options relative to First Item click on the second icon and the one just below it. All right, we need to increase the size of the layer boundary now so we can add our effects without being confined to that layer boundary. So let's go up to layer and select layer to image size. All right, we're now ready to slice our content. So we're going to use our path tool to do that. I'm gonna start up here in the top left. And once I click once, I'm left with an anchor point. And then when I click down here again in the bottom right, I get another anchor point and they're joined together with this path. And this path right here represents where the text will be sliced. If you're not happy with that angle, just grab an anchor point and move it according to your creative vision. All right, we need to close out this path now. So go ahead and continue clicking on the outside here. Go back to the last anchor point, hold down your control key and click on that circle to close the path. Now we can create a selection by hitting our enter or return key. And we're going to cut out this part of the content. So go up to edit and select cut then edit and paste so we can paste it into a new layer by clicking on this icon right here. We now have two slices. Let's go ahead and rename these. It looks like this one is the bottom. So let's call this slice bottom. And we need to move this one down since it's on the bottom. And this one is slice top. All right, let's grab our move tool either through the toolbar or through the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter M. And then we want to make sure that we have, I want to do the slice bottom 
and I'm going to click and drag this down here to create the illusion that it's sliced. I'm actually going to use my zoom tool here with the letter Z to zoom in because I want to make sure there's no space between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my move tool again and use my up arrow key to move it up one pixel. All right, I'm going to grab my zoom tool again and with the control key held down, I can zoom out. All right, let's increase the layer boundary for this new layer as well. So let's go up to layer and select layer to image size. And now we're going to create a drop shadow. So it looks like this was cut out of a piece of paper and maybe that paper is bent and we can do that with a curved drop shadow. So we're gonna go back to our path tool here to create a new path. So I'm gonna click here and here, but I think we need to zoom in to see where that path is being applied so it aligns perfectly with our slice. Now, after I selected my zoom tool, the path disappeared, but that's okay. It's still there. We just need to make it visible. So let's go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and select Paths. Inside of here, you're going to see two paths. So this is the first one that we created, and this is the one that I just created. So if I click right here, it turns on the visibility of that path. I don't want that one, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and turn on the other one. Now I need to activate this path with our path tool by clicking on it, and then I can go ahead and adjust these anchor points to align with where I cut it previously. So right about there looks pretty good. And now we need to create our arch for that drop shadow. So I'm gonna come back here to this one over here on the right, and I'm gonna click right here, and don't release your mouse button. You wanna click and drag out so you can create that curve, so just like that. Now, if you clicked and didn't do that, you can come down here in the tool options and select edit, and then click on that point and pull it out and pull out those two handles like I have here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out now so I can see everything and adjust the curve accordingly. So I'm gonna grab my pass tool here again so I can activate it. And I'm gonna grab this handle here and shorten it up just a little bit. So maybe something like that. All right, so we don't need to close out the path for this. And we're just going to fill it in with a solid black color. So let's go to our foreground color here and choose black and then hit enter or return to create a selection. Now, before we fill it in, we need to create a new layer for it. So let's go to our layers panel here and click on this icon here and type in shadow. Make sure it's filled with transparency, click okay, and make sure that shadow is in between the top and the bottom. Now we can go down to our tool options to fill it in with black. All right, I'm gonna come over here to select and deselect by clicking on none. If I grab my move tool, it will deactivate that path, but it's still turned on. So we need to come over here and click on this eyeball to turn it off. All right, let's add a little bit of a blur to it so it blends in a little bit better. So let's go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and then increase the size right here. So maybe, something around four or five. Go ahead and click OK. I wanna zoom in here because I wanna move this shadow up a little bit. So grab your move tool and use your arrow keys to move it up. I'm using my top arrow key, of course, to move it up. So right about there. And the reason why I'm moving this up is because I wanna create a hard edge for this part of the shadow. I don't want it soft like this. So to do that, we're gonna go back to our paths panel. Make sure you have this top one selected and turn it on. And then with your path tool, go ahead and activate. Go ahead and create a selection by hitting enter or return. We're gonna go up to select so we can invert that selection and then hit your delete or backspace key to create that hard edge. Let's go ahead and deselect and turn off this path. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And then drop the opacity down to your personal preference. I'm gonna set mine to around 85. All right, now it's your turn to complete this text design project and to post it in our private Facebook group. To join our group, you can locate the link in the description below. 
Also, please support my channel by commenting on this video, liking it, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Don't forget to check out my GIMP text effects playlist that has over 20 more tutorials and projects on text effects. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.